Good morning. Welcome to St. Martin's in the Field Episcopal Church on this beautiful 25th Sunday after Pentecost. Delighted that you all have chosen to worship with us here in the sanctuary and all of you who are at home. We are really well. We are delighted that you are here with us also virtually. If you are online, you can take a second to uh, let us know who you are and where you are and the, the number of people worshiping with you. If you're online, that would be wonderful as we can get a better spread of the idea of the spread of the good news of the gospel for this morning. Everything you need for worship can be found in your worship bulletins. Thank you all for uh, observing proper protocol and remaining masked. That's wonderful. Uh, we do get to sing in church and at home, which is wonderful as well. So delighted you're here to worship with us. And uh, again, good morning and welcome.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty Almighty God, God, to you you all hearts hearts are open, open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the first book of Samuel. On the day when Elkan sacrificed, he would give portions of, to his wife Peniah and to all her sons and daughters, but to Hannah he gave double portion because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. Her rival used to provoke her severely to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year after year. As often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore Hannah wept and would not eat. Her husband Elkanah said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than 10 sons? After they had eaten and drunk at Shiloh, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow, O Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a male child Then I will set him before you as a Nazarene until the day of his death. He shall drink neither wine nor intoxicants, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying silently, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. But Hannah answered him, No, my Lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And she said, Let your servant find favor in your sight. Then the woman went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was no longer sad. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah, Elkanah knew his wife, Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in praying a portion of Psalm 16, which is also found on page 599 in the Book of Common Prayer. Protect Protect me, me, O O God, God, 
for I, I take, take refuge, refuge in you. you. I, I have said to the Lord, Lord you are my Lord, my good, good above all other. All, all my, my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My, my body, body also shall rest in hope. A reading from Hebrews. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made footstools for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from all evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who is promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And when, what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith 
And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. First, let me say how wonderful it is to see so many people here in church. This is fantastic. They're coming back. Hooray! Thank you all for being here. And you at home, you can come too. We've got actually room, which is great. I'm delighted that you all are here. You know, one of the things I was thinking about this week is that um, earlier, uh, I guess last week, uh, something that hasn't happened in over a hundred years finally happened. Uh, It was a momentous event. It happened for two days, um, and it was the fact that the general public could actually approach the tomb of the unknown soldiers for the very first time. The men uh, who guard our unknown soldiers take 21 steps along the dark blue carpet, 21 steps, and they pause for 21 seconds at the end of each of their time before they turn and march 21 steps back. And that process has been going on uninterrupted for almost 100 years now, not pausing for, unlike the Postal Service, not pausing for rain or sleet or snow or wind or hail or night or fog or fire or anything. That happens all the time. But for two brief days, us mere mortals were allowed to come to be close to those who are unknown. In a number of churches and synagogues and houses of worship, to be able to come to where the sanctuary is, to come up to where the altar is, to actually touch the altar, to be up on the bima is a sacred place. And if you were in Jesus' time, it was forbidden. Unless you were a priest, and not just any old priest, a priest of the house of Levi, you couldn't come up and be into the holiest of holies, the, the place where, all the, where God lived, literally. You were not allowed. I think it's wonderful that um, we can actually come up. You could actually come up and touch the fair linen if you wanted. You could, like, you know, it doesn't... Look, I didn't catch anything on fire. It's great. It's, it, this is linen. It's good. Sorry, Alter Guild. It maybe gets a little wrinkled. So what Paul is saying to the Hebrews is a radical thing. That we can approach with assurance of faith, Almighty God. That we are worthy to be present in God's house, in God's presence, because of Jesus and the sacrifice that he made. We have been washed clean. Our consciences have been made pure. We have been washed by the blood of God in Christ, and we've been baptized with Christ like we did with the two two children uh, last Sunday and the one at the 8 o'clock, those three kids. We also have been baptized, and amen, hallelujah, we are made free from sin and death forever. Pretty amazing stuff, huh? There is no barrier or separation from us to have relationship with God except the barriers that we impose. God is always going like this, waiting for us to get out of whatever funk we're in of sin and other things and remember to turn around and come back to God who can't wait to run off the porch like the guy who was the father from the prodigal son. You read that story. He literally leaps off the porch to go rescue his son and throw his arms around him and say, you're finally home. The other thing that catches my ear this morning, aside from that wonderful image that we are all welcome in God's sanctuary, and that we have been redeemed by Jesus' death and resurrection to new life so that we can have a wonderful full relationship, an open relationship with God, I mean, other than all that, is this image of provoking one another to do good and love. I don't know about you, but the last time anybody provoked me to do something was kind of like uh, Hannah's uh, uh, rival uh, for Elkanah's love, who was provoking her and saying, ha ha, you can't get pregnant, na, 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 na. God doesn't love you. Or however it was, she provoked him. I don't know about you guys, but my brother, sister, and I were champions of provoking one another to go do bad things. Like, my parents would say, whatever you do, don't eat those cookies. And then I'd go to my brother, 
go get those cookies <laughs> and make him go up and get the cookies, right? I don't know when someone has provoked you to do something good any time recently. I don't know when you felt provoked other than to do something in hostility, to return hostility for hostility. But what the letter, the writer of the letter of Hebrews is saying is that because we have done and because we have had done for us this making of holy through Christ, we have to, as Christians, provoke one another to go do good. To go and be loving in the world. We have to. We have no other choice. Now, I don't know what it looks like to provoke somebody to do good necessarily, because like I said, my only examples of that have been things that my little brother or sister and I provoke each other to not do some good things. But my guess is if you had to think about what it would be for you to do to provoke somebody to go do good, it would probably be leading by example. It would probably be when you see something that needs to get done, you go do it and bring someone to go do it with you. It would probably be like if you saw somebody that was hurting, you would go alleviate the hurt. If you saw somebody that didn't have a place to stay, you might go ahead and say, come and stay at our house. It's probably like if somebody was hungry, you might give them something to eat. We celebrate St. Martin's Day on Thursday, the 11th, and, uh, you know, St. Martin saw a beggar who was out in the cold, freezing. He took the only real big possession he had as a Roman soldier, which was his cloak, the thing that literally kept him warm in the snow. He cut it in half and gave it to the beggar to keep warm. That's provoking somebody to do good. Often the Holy Spirit's involved in that. And when I think about being provoked to do something good, I think about what it is to be good stewards of the gift that we've been given. The gift of this love of God in Christ. The gift of all that we have. Which literally, all of it comes from God. And I think about, when I think about doing those good things, it probably involves me taking time out of my busy life to be doing something else for somebody else. It probably takes me doing, offering a skill or a talent or some way that I have some gift to share. And it may also involve me giving of myself, of my finances and resources to make something happen, big something happen. Provoke somebody to do something good in the world. I'm going to provoke you now. Get ready to feel provoked. We are at a moment in the life of the church. We are at a moment in the life of our church. We are in a moment in the life of Christianity writ large where we can decide right now to live or to continue to die off. Not just St. Martin's, Christianity. We can decide right now whether we're going to want to provoke people to do good in the world or we're going to die. That is what we are faced with. Our church is at a moment where we can choose to show up with our hands, to show up with our skills, and to show up, yes, with our money, to make good happen in the world, in the name of Jesus. Or we can choose to hemorrhage members and fade off into oblivion. That is where we are. I want to tell you something. Every Sunday since, I don't know, maybe about 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 weeks ago, we've had visitors at all of our services, people who have never been here before who somehow have found their way to us. We need to provoke them to do good in the world because we do good in the world, because we love in the world. We need to be examples to all those who come to this place to say, my God, St. Martin's has it. The Holy Spirit is there and alive. This place knows what it's like to be in the world and to make it better, and I want to be a part of that. It won't happen by us just sitting in the pews and then leaving from this place and then coming back next Sunday or three Sundays or four Sundays from now. If that's what you're doing, you're not provoking anybody, not even yourself, to come to church every Sunday. If you're not giving 10% of your income to the church, 
in joyful thanksgiving for all of the blessings that God has given you, I am provoking you now to see where it is you are giving money and why it isn't back to God in joyful recognition for every blessing you have. And that person may be sitting next to you is the blessing. It may be that you're going to go home today and have a roof over your head or a hot meal for yourself. You may have electricity and Wi-Fi at your house. There are a thousand million blessings that you've been given. All of those come from God. Everything belongs to God, and God says you get to keep 90% of all of it. If you're not working towards that 10%, I encourage you to do that in three years. Because what you're doing is not a financial transaction, it's a spiritual growth transaction. God, I love you so much, and I trust in you so much, that giving away money, I don't even care. Because I have you, and you have me. Everything you've given me is all around me, and I am so thankful. You know what? 10%? Here you go. My brothers and sisters, if we did that in one year, and I said this before, and I absolutely mean it, it's a God's honest truth. You guys want to fix homelessness in Severna Park? St. Martin's in the Field Episcopal Church can do that. I mean, we can do that this year, forever. It's going to take money, it's going to take our heads and our hearts, and our skills, and our talents, and all of us. But we could do it. The vestry met on Wednesday night, and they answered a question that's the first time that I've had this question be answered in six years, and maybe even longer, actually, for our church. And the question was, St. Martin's in the Field wants to be known for outreach into the community, for good sermons, for youth and children's programming, and for our school. The vestry said those are the four priorities for what we want to be known for in the world. It's going to take all of us to do this. And it's going to take all of us to provoke one another and even people who aren't here yet that we know should be here to come and join us in that. In doing so, we will conquer anything that we put our minds to. In doing so, we will spread the good news and love of God to those who don't even know that St. Martin's exists. In doing so, we will prove to ourselves and deepen our relationship with God to know that we are loved and that we are beloved and that we can share and spread that love of God and the good news of Christ to all we meet. Amen. Following our traditional one moment of silence, at the sound of the triangle, we invite you to contemplate for an additional minute of silence the following question in our season of stewardship. What at St. Martin's facilitates and grows your relationship with God?
faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today's prayers of the people are form six, found on page five of your worship bulletin, or page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, especially Thelma, Donald, Kim, Jeannie, Kenny, Amanda, Mary Beth, Cliff, Jeff, Barbara, Jim, Patty, Susan, Pam, Margaret, Gavin, George, Sarah, Matt, Tina, Chris, Lois, Kyle, and Catherine. For those, For those who, who minister, minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Eugene and Robert, our bishops. For Matthew, Nathan, and John, our clergy. Kathleen, our seminarian. And Charlie, our interim head of school. In the Anglican cycle of prayer this week, we pray for the Anglican Church of Australia. And in our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Grace Memorial in Darlington, Holy Cross in the Rocks, Holy Trinity in Churchville, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all, for all who serve, serve God and God's church. We now lift up to God the special needs and concerns of our congregation, praying either aloud or silently in our hearts.
Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, for all in our parish family who celebrate birthdays this week, Max, Jean, Scudder, Julia, Bambi, Katie, Bunny, Steve, Nicole, Ed, and Bob, and for Steve and Sally Burton who celebrate their wedding anniversary. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy on us, us, most us merciful, merciful Father. Father. In your Jesus, compassion, forgive, forgive us our sins, sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. 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 Have a seat for a quick couple of announcements this morning. If you want to follow along, you can find all the announcements and all the wonderful things that are happening here at St. Martin's as we get ready for Advent uh, on the back couple of pages of your worship bulletins. Um, first, I'd like to thank uh, Nelda Cleland, who's here uh, filling in for us. So thank you very much for playing for us this morning, Nelda. Thank you. Uh, tonight for at 5.30, we have a laser tag with Tom... Tom's laser tag. Tom has laser tag. He's bringing it to us at 5.30 for EYC. That's everybody from grades 6 to 12, and we'll be meeting at the picnic tables for that tonight. Also, there are a number of things that are happening as we gear up and get ready for Advent, ways that you can uh, see in word and in uh, image uh, the different Advent words that will be posted in the 24 days of Advent this year at um, hashtag Advent Word, which is a wonderful online global community. We have ways that you can uh, get... Uh, yourself right with mysticism with Thomas Merton. Uh, Bill Thomas will be offering a class uh, starting November 15th at 7 through on Zoom about that. Also, we have um, adult uh, Advent formation stuff happening uh, with um, a brand new course that Kathleen is teaching. And there's all sorts of ways of things that we're doing in Advent. The things you got to, there's several things you got to sign up for. Um, we're having Advent wreath making uh, in person this year, hooray for that, our very first uh, parish-wide event in person happening on Sunday the 28th at 9.15 to 10.15 in Parish Hall, and we'd like you to come uh, sign up for that just so we know how many um, Advent wreath rings and things we need to purchase for that. We're also going to be doing Advent in a Box again, which is wonderful for everybody if you're uh, from, let's see, eight months to 808 uh, years old. Um, it's perfect for you. There's be wonderful opportunities to have some faith and fellowship and some uh, projects that will be done each week. If you have people that are um, relatives and family from around the country, around the world, let us know, and we will actually send them the whole packet as well, and they can join us together for that coming up, uh, starting on um, the 28th, which is the first Sunday of, to, of Advent, um, November 28th, from 4 to 5 p.m. Now, let's see. I know that Philip Clevin's got an, a, a wonderful announcement for us about J2A wreath and poinsettia sales. Take it away. Hi, I'm Philip, and today I'm with the J2A, and we're going to be selling I'll hold this poinsettias. And today is the last 
day you can order them online or in person so if you'd like to get one come uh, please come see me after church in the narthex where's the narthex for people who don't know where the narthex is right there right out there at the right there okay Wonderful. Thank you very much. And this all goes to help fund our uh, J2A pilgrimage, correct? Yes. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I made mention a little bit earlier um, that the uh, vestry met on Wednesday night, and I'd like to ask uh, Meg Stott to come up so that she can tell us all the wonderful things that happened at vestry. Meg. As someone said earlier, we're like the Beastie Boys. we got to pass the mic. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the ministry of the vestry is to discern the will of God for the body of Christ at St. Martin's in the Field Episcopal Church. Your vestry met in person outdoors on Wednesday night to spend time discerning priorities for the future of St. Martin's and to discuss what is needed to meet our goals with budget, staff, and volunteers. We were happy to be joined by our two new student members, Taylor Boatler, and Markella Gatanis. Our treasurer, Sally Burton, passed along the news that as our attendance on Sundays has increased, so has the amount of donations during the offertory. But we are still not back to pre-pandemic levels. Also, thank you for making sure to stay current with your pledges as we near the end of the year. The vestry are getting ready to turn in our pledges for 2022 and we encourage you to prayerfully and joyfully join us. If you haven't already, make this the year you switch to giving through ACH. It's much easier for you and much more predictable for our budget planning. In news from our St. Martin's Episcopal School, applications are being accepted and re-enrollment contracts will be going out soon in anticipation of another banner year. The school has paid down the majority of their debt from the new building and we anticipate that it will be fully retired by the end of the year. Interim head of school, Charlie Sachs, told us that efforts are also being made to bring our preschool and grade school teacher salaries closer to the average comparable to independent schools. Our next meeting will be on Wednesday, December 8th. Thank you. Thank you very much, Meg. The Episcopal Diocese of Maryland met yesterday for a full, long day on Zoom, um, and I want to thank our delegates to Diocesan Convention, Bill Thomas and David Bourdon, and our alternate, Joan Townsend, who got to do a couple of votes also as well in there, which is great. Um, and uh, we will have uh, some updates about all the things that happened at convention coming up for you in a couple of weeks. I'd like to ask Wamandre Williams to come up and talk to us a little bit about, if you want to turn to the front side front cover of your bulletins, that would be helpful, about... Stewardship and St. Martin's. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, as Father Matthew said, I'm Wamadri Williams. People call me Wadi. And um, I just want to share with you, St. Martin's has been my spiritual home and has been that for over a quarter century now. I'm not quite as young as I look. When <laughs> Kathy and I, with our three young kids, moved back to Maryland from Illinois, an important part of our home search was finding a church in which we, le which we felt called to live into our Christianity, especially a church in which our kids would be comfortable I'll be surrounded by people who know a practical, everyday God. That has been this place for us. Over the years, St. Martin's has been the base, the solid foundation from which we have grown and learned and loved and done. St. Martin's, through the people, through you, and the love and caring we share, has been there in many ways, providing an environment in which we have had profoundly spiritual experiences, whether it's each child on their pilgrimage, or being part of a passion play that brought me even close to God through drama, or the Bible studies we have taken part in, 
are working with gifts discernment to more fully live into the gifts God has put in us or singing in the choir. I could go on, but I hope it is clear. St. Mons is a place where I've been able to work on loving God with all my being and have been surrounded by love that I can only describe as others loving me as themselves. My brother Warima was killed almost 23 years ago in Sierra Leone. I was devastated, but I was not alone. Beside my incredible family, I was surrounded by the love of my fellow parishioners here at St. Martin's. Your presence enveloped my mom, Kathy, the kids, and me with God's own love. In the midst of tragedy, St. Martin's was here for me, allowing me to live into the love God has promised us. St. Martin's has shown me what it means to love your neighbor as yourself, and I am eternally grateful to all of you. I am, believe it or not, painfully shy. <laughs> and public speaking, such as this, is not my chosen means of relaxation. <laughs> However, one part of my worship is particularly dear to me and close to my heart. I am in the choir. This is a blessing to me that is one of the great joys of my life. I'm a bass, go figure, <laughs> but there is a secret that perhaps you do not know. The choir probably does. I cannot sing. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I love to sing, but I can carry a tune in a bucket. This isn't com true confessions. To me, this is an example of how God's love is manifest in our community here in St. Martin's. It is an example of what loving each other as God loves us means to me. God does, does not expect perfection from us. God wants joy for us. And that is what the choir and this St. Martin's community gives me, the space to be joyful in my worship, to love God with all my being. Every time I stand with a choir and sing, I'm enveloped by the knowledge that all the choir is lifting me and loving me to do my best. I know that God walks among us here. At those times, I can feel his loving gaze. Thank you. Thank you, Adi. One of the things you can do, uh, actually coming up this Sunday, uh, on the 21st, um, is Thanksgiving holiday sharing. It's an all-hands-on-deck event um, where we will be uh, taking care of uh, at least 35-plus families uh, that need our help over the holidays. Um, there's information on how to sign up with the Sign Up Genius um, and to uh, when you can uh, drop off uh, your food that you're bringing on the 21st. So we need many hands to make light work. If you want to get in touch with Cindy Rott, her contact information is there for more details about how you can put your good hands to work. Um, finally, uh, this is what our pledge card looks like. You should have received one in the mail this past week. If you did not, the ushers have a whole couple of handfuls of them in the back, and we'd like you to take one home with you. And what I'd like you to do is the first thing you need to do before you put pen to paper is to pray and to ask God to come up with and to help your eyes and ears and hearts to see and hear and feel the amount of blessings you've received. Like I said earlier, pledging is not a financial transaction. It is a spiritual discipline. And if you pray and ask God to guide your heart into what you want to give back to God, that number will be holy and wonderfully acceptable to God. We'll bring them back on the 21st as well. It'll be a big day. And we'll uh, put them in the offering uh, envelopes or the, there'll be either a, pledge, a basket for um, pledge cards out there or the regular uh, brass um, offering basins. And we'll bless those and we'll lift them up to God um, this next Sunday. 
So if you haven't received a pledge card, um, by all means, grab one on the way out and uh, invite God into your spiritual discernment for pledging for this year. And my sisters and brothers, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and with archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it 
and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep, keep the feast. feast. Alleluia. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have fallen short. Come. Because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. <laughs>